Hey everyone, welcome to Zeitgeist Zealots. I'm Forrest. I'm Major. Now I'm Robbie. And okay. I'm Tip. And that tip. guy chewing his tip. <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure if everyone saw everything. Oh, um, wow. So Major, you did not watch Army of Thieves, but everyone else did, correct? Yeah, I believe that is the case. Okay, uh, Robbie, you saw it. Spo- spoil it away. Yeah, I saw it. So basically, uh, when you watch a prequel to a movie you haven't seen, I guess you're not too invested in it, but it's really, you know, not <laughs> yeah, much. Right, not you, much haven't, you haven't <laughs> seen the original movie. It's, I it's, not quite, uh, it's not quite and a zombie movie. And you're asking us to watch it. You haven't even seen it. It's not quite a zombie movie, and it's not quite a heist movie. It's just sort of like a, a weird mesh. Are there any zombies two. in that movie? It's basically the zombie apocalypse is happening in America, and they're just watching it on news reels. But it's not really doesn't really have a part to the actual main story. It's yeah, just, they it's, just, it's just meant to. They mention it a few times, but that's about just, it. It's just meant to be connective tissue to the Army of the Dead prequel, which is so movie. weird because like you know it's a little bit like uh, Infinity War, Black Widow kind of thing. Like we know the person's going to die in the next mm-hmm. chronologically in the next movie or in a feature movie. So like, why do we even get attached to this character? But apparently in the um, Army of the Dead movie, there's a, a safe called the Gunter Morag or something like that. It's like the, the fourth uh-huh, part. Yeah, like uh, they made a big deal about this this very special. Okay, well, this, this movie is about him opening up the first three of those safes. Because there were like four made and um, the fourth one's in the Army of the Dead movie. But this is the one where he opens up the first three. So it's basically... Uh, I guess his origin, and he's not called Ludwig Dieter. He's called like Sebastian something or another. So basically, this is it's sort of like Better Call Saul. He's not quite Saul yet. He's not quite Dieter yet. But this is when he becomes him. Yeah, that makes sense. Even though it's like, um, and then they bring the safe to him. Wait, I, I, did he die in the Army of the Dead movie? Does he yeah, get back with that girl? So. Now they might ret- they might retcon. Uh, it's so that you know he hid in a different safe or whatever, but yeah, for all intents and purposes. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't think like Zack Snyder's gonna retcon because apparently he was like an unexpected hit in the movies. So yeah, I really enjoyed cool. him, Adam. So they could, you know, like you know, it seems like just throwing spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks, and he was one of the things that stuck. So they're gonna probably bring because already announced the sequel, Planet of the Dead. So I um, guess we're gonna see space zombies. But yeah, like I said, I haven't seen that movie, so it's, it's kind of strange watching a prequel to a movie you haven't seen. But like on its own, it's like a okay heist movie. Um, it does sort of like break down like the, the safe cracking subculture. Like it starts off with him going to a safe cracking competition, and he wins. So um, I thought it would've been better if it showcased other safe crackers. But there's only that's only like a little bit in the movie. There's like a, a, like one guy who's almost as good as he is, but he's better. So. Um, and on the Basically last the rest- safe, he's not even... He's just kind of watching what he's doing, not even messing with his safe. Yeah. So basically, this girl pretty much enlists him into this team where there's, like, the, the getaway driver, the hacker. She's, like, a jewel thief, but... Um, and there's, like, another dude who I think just is a distraction. I'm not really sure what his job is. But, um, yeah, so they robbed three safes, and there's a, a cop character after them, and there's a betrayal scene... And then, oh um, yeah, his, his name was safe. Brad Cage. Brad it was Cage. like if Brad Pitt and Nicolas Cage had a had an <laughs> even better action hero name. Yeah. Brad Cage. I mean, basically, yeah. I don't know who loved that character in Arm of the Dead. I guess Zack Snyder did. But, so that's um, why they made this prequel. But it, yeah, I mean, it was okay. It was like I think you know, not many Netflix films are I think amazing it seems it seems like their tv shows are way better yeah i would agree with that but like most netflix films are just like so 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 this was just like a so so one for me but at the end of the movie they show when they first meet him and is that an actual is that an actual scene from army of the dead or is it just added yeah it is okay so it's just like it was like archive footage so it's basically when they when it first showed up yes conveniently he was in Las Vegas, the time they needed him, so it seems. Um, yeah. So yeah, I really, I mean, yeah, I mean, the safes look cool, and I like, like, you know, they had, like, um, they actually showed the safes being open from the inside, 
So I really kind of just showed the engineering that goes into it, but you know, it had the standard, you know, cop after the thieves and yeah. So, you know, this yeah. movie just uh, exists for me. <laughs> It's a movie it that exists. I saw and exists. Would you recommend that I, I watch it? Did you like Army of the Dead? Yeah, enough. But that was like zombies. I mean, if you like that character and no. you like Army I mean, of the Dead, I liked him out of the, the, the group like, of it, like the group of people. Like he was a, a more interesting character. But that's like I mean, like, it's like my favorite. Like me- it's like, you, like Ross is my favorite member of like the friends group. Okay. It's like yeah. I, I mean, I if like he wasn't them, your I favorite no attachment. If he wasn't your favorite character in Army of the Dead, maybe don't invest two hours of your life in this. Put, but, put, it, back, put it in the background right here. But yeah, I mean, I think like just the old, the Uber Snyder fans are just going to like eat it up, even though he's not even directing it, but he is, he is producing it. So I don't know. I mean, I thought everyone was going to watch this. Apparently not, but I don't know. That's uh, how I felt about the last movie or the, the last. That was like, like a Snyder two, film. And that was like a two hour and 40 minute movie. I'm like, no way. No zombie movie should be that long. Uh, it should be like an hour and fifty at most. At most. Well, the very fact that it was a prequel to a zombie movie, I mean, yeah, kind of yeah. like with no zombies. Su- yeah, it well, kind of sucked well, that it was just like these like weird they flashbacks flash to zombies well, they're, or they're flash, flash forwards. forwards. Yeah, they're premonitions. Flash yeah. Yeah, I was wondering how they were yeah, incorporating yeah. zombies like in, Dune. in the prequel. When it was like it was. It seemed to be like the zombies were popping up, but it wasn't public knowledge yet, or something. Basically, well, no, no, it was public knowledge. They were just popping up in America. They weren't in like Europe. Okay. Um, and um, he was just having dreams about being attacked by zombies, just to, like mm-hmm. add more connective tissue. But even though it had nothing to do with the story, really. Now it's some kind of uh, virus that causes the zombiehood, right? Yeah, basically. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I really have nothing more to say about this film. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so did. Uh, what else can we talk about? I guess we talk about the Morbius trailer. Yeah, we talked about that. Morbius. Yeah, watched it. Because this is definitely going to have some ramifications on future films, possibly the MCU. Um, we saw Vulture in the trailer. So, yeah. you know, uh, more connected tissue with the MCU. What do you think Sony's doing? Is Sony trying to... They don't even know. It's oh, like... I doubt they know. But, like, are they trying to, like, wrap themselves... Immerse themselves as much into the MCU as possible so they can, like, when they need to re-up, uh, they can, like, get a better contract? They're really hammering home on the fact that, you know, you know, with Vulture and they had, like, from the studio that brought you Spider-Man Far From Home. And, you know, they're really just hammering in on, like... And, and Venom. Spider-verse, like, the successful, yeah. successful movies. Like, hey, this is we made those successful movies, and this movie takes place in the same universe as those movies. So you should watch it. Um, of course, that's literally what a resume is. Like, hey, I did this and this job. But they didn't really do Spider-Man job. Far From Home, though. They just, I think they just paid, for, or did Marvel pay for it? Uh, there was a joint deal. They paid. It's like some, Sony some distributed amount. it, but I mean. Um, I think like Marvel, Marvel paid, paid for, for it. A part of it, and then they get a little bit on the back end uh, from ticket sales or whatever. Yeah. So. And Major, you said it was a joint deal? Yeah. That joint uh, must a, have been a like joint, half a mile long. A joint venture. A Kevin Feige joint. Yeah. So. They, they probably can afford it with all the money they've been making off these. Disney movies. can afford anything. It's like the next. I mean, they really have no competition. I mean, Warner Brothers is supposed to be the biggest competitor, but like. You've seen what an amazing job they've been doing. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, you, you, you know, that's what they should use the the, uh, the Keystone XL pipeline for. Instead of piping oil, they could just roll gigantic joints. Oh, I thought you meant like just to distribute money through like uh, at a bank. <laughs> a, a bank. They really need to use it to distribute water from the east to the west because yeah. the west has no water and the east has too much water. The water pipeline's been. Uh, an oh, and then we can become rich by selling years. water. Like Dune. West is like a car. It's worth more than gold, I know. You can, uh, you can buy water features in California now since the water market's like deregulated, I believe. Cool. It's yeah. Just, but yeah, it takes four years to get a solar uh, roof up, apparently, in California. So much red tape, you gotta get through it. Yeah. Permits. I heard that's rough. So, yeah, so Morbius, um, we have Jared Leto, again, trying to um, emulate a pasty, a white-faced, skinny, um, mentally unstable character. 
who may uh, kill people, now, kills is, people. Is Jared is Jared Leto? Uh, is he a bad actor? I don't think. Well, he won an Oscar for like um, I think Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah, right. So you think he's a good actor, but like then he puts out performances. Well, he was, he was a good Requiem actor. for Requiem for a Dream, which is where like I think um, his first movie was like Prefontaine. It was like you know the Pele of cross country, and oh, uh, that was Jared. Uh, well, it was so weird. They had two Prefontaine movies come out at the exact same time. Like one was with Billy Crudup, and one the other one was Jared Leto. I don't know which one's better. I think the Billy Crudup one I've heard is better. I've watched neither of them, but um, I think the they, the, the, fir- the first one that came out for us was called uh, Pre Prefontaine. Yeah, and then they and then they made another one called like or Running Something, Running Brave or Post Fontaine. Didn't y'all watch yeah, it for po- the varsity? <laughs> Thank you. Did y'all have to watch it before the state meet tip? Heck yeah. I, I remember so, you talking oh, about yeah, that dude. during cross country. That, that gets you pumped up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so Morbius. What's that other trailer? Another trailer sounded way better. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the whole on Morbius. So, yeah. So, Morbius. The, uh, uh, they mentioned they had the Voltron living vampire who's doing a much thicker New York accent than he had in. Uh, homecoming. So uh, I think this is definitely just like Michael Keane's like, well, he's basically just like he didn't. He's supposed to be in the Flash movie too, and like I think he said like I have no under, I have no idea how the plot of this movie works, you know, because like you think he said like literally the writers are looking at him and they said like we're confusing you, you have no idea what we're talking about. He's like no idea. Nope. So I'm sure it's, it's the exact same situation with this. So he's like it's a different universe, but it's not. So I'm basically just like, just tell me where I need to be, where to stand, and what to say. Yeah. Yeah. So I like the hell out of it. It's very, very confusing. Um, it's best just not to deal with movie continuity. Like when you try to make sense of it, you're just gonna like give yourself a brain freeze. So what else? Uh, at the very end of the trailer. Well, do you want to go into why they call him the living vampire? Because he's not a traditional vampire. He's a vampire made by science. Science. Ooh, yes. science vampire. It's like he was bitten up. He was sort of bitten by radioactive bats, I think. Uh, I thought it was... So, like, he was working... He's got a, a, some kind of blood disease, and he mm-hmm. was working on trying to find a cure. Uh, and then something with the blood, and I think electricity was involved. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say he fell into <laughs> a bat of blood. Uh, well, in the, in the trailer, it's like he uh, cuts his hand... And there's like some sort of net thing, and then the vamp and the bats come out. So I don't know if like the bats fly through the net, become mutated, they bite him. My question is: Is now the best time to put out a movie about bats infecting people? Ooh, yes, yeah. it's always a great time. Was that ever proven, or was that just like the popular? Oh, I, I don't. I'm pretty sure it. I think it's widely thought of. Like they don't know the exact origins, but like they believe it came from. A bat or a a, ba- a a penguin mean or whatever. Uh, it's sort of just like you know they've but already they, they they started all these movies before the pandemic and now you know same thing with like No Time to Die that's that's about like a bioweapon. Being yeah, used. like geez Louise Hollywood fucking get something new. Like I the can't stand. believe how many movies were like postponed because they are all virus related, right? The like stand uh, came out, <laughs> yeah. What do you call it? Um, out earlier this year. Winter Soldier. You can talk about staying all you want. No one's gonna watch it. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, but it's the same problem. <laughs> I know, like, but they yeah. started making it for the pandemic, but it's about a pandemic. And, yeah, and, and then yeah, like, see the well, South Park. Already, we've already invested. So- oh, as a new uh, South Park out? No, no it's like, a pandemic special. With uh, it was like Randy and Mickey. The, oh yeah, they yeah. also did but a bat too. Or when's something? the new? When's the new episode coming out? Or the new movie, made for TV movie coming out? I don't know. I think it's supposed to come out soon. Not soon um, enough. So. Yeah, bad timing, but it's like they've already invested so much money that they have to release it. So I think it's PG thirteen. So yeah, or heavily modify it, like Winter Soldier. And wait, Forrest, how many of, stands uh, have they made? They made like the they made this is like the second attempt to make one, a, a TV series. Like the first one was on like it was like in the nineties. Had like Gary Sinise, I think Lieutenant Dan was Stu Redman, and um, I was only like four episodes, but this was like an actual like 10 episode series but i didn't hear it was that good it was on like cbs uh their streaming service which i don't think anyone has unless all like you're a diehard star trek fan is that what yeah, cbs called? all access yeah. they've renamed it like maybe like paramount plus because i think paramount owns cbs but i don't know i i haven't heard anything good that's come from that that streaming service like the new picard series isn't that great star trek discovery i heard, I heard, oh, great I heard about. good things about off deck under deck 
Well, yeah, it's like a comedy series based, like that takes place in the Star Trek world. Yeah, I heard, yeah, I heard like that. I, one, said, I heard that's like the best show on, on CBS or oh, okay. on Paramount Plus. Yeah. So, um, what we're talking about? Yeah, just the stand. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Probably won't. Um, Paramount Plus should just put a picture of Major riding roller coasters. <laughs> yeah, we get people just have to just have a video of Major riding roller coasters. I would watch that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Who, who knows? Um, they sold the Transformers franchise, I think, and G.I. Joe. So you know, maybe they can do something good with those coming up. Um, oh, I forgot there was a, a new G.I. Joe movie, Snake Eyes or whatever. Oh, yeah. I don't Did think I never saw out? it. I heard it. I, yeah, actually, no, I don't think it did very well or it didn't get good reviews. Maybe some people went to go see it. It was with Henry Golding, the guy from Crazy Rich Asians. Maybe some people went to go see it. <laughs> and I get it's just it's just where it goes against the whole point of Snake Eyes. He's supposed to be, you know, he doesn't more talk, of a, right? What kind he's of, more movie of a presence? Is that? He's no, he's more of a presence. He's not like a character. Well, he's a character, but it's just like you know, he's all about like you know, not being faceless and not saying anything. Like that's what makes him cool. So when you give him a face and you have him say stuff, it sort of just takes away the mystique. <laughs> Solid the character. Six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, oh well, third time's a charm, Paramount. <laughs> um, maybe they'll do something. I'm sure they'll get it right at some point. Um, so, all right, so Mor- Morbius, that's going to happen. We'll see. I think Doctor Who's the bad guy in it. So he's going to be like the evil vampire. They didn't really show it, so I, I, I applaud them for that, not spoiling everything in the movie. Um, they, they heavily referenced Venom, I'm like... This is almost as weird as that thing that happened in San Francisco. He like looks at the camera and winks. It's like, we're connected. Now you have to come watch us. Yep. We got you. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, enough of Morbius. It's coming out, I think, is it coming out this year or next year? I think January. So it's like the yeah, first January. blockbuster movie in January. So that's like sort of like January, February is usually like the dumping bin for movies. Yeah. That's like Resident Evil came out. The Underworld movies came out during that time. You know, just like, you know, Forest, maybe it's because it's cold and everyone's. It's also Neeson season because all the Neeson movie comes out. All the Lee Neeson action movies come out in January or February. Really? That's... Yeah, like the gray, like nonstop. Um, I, I don't know if Taken came out in that time, but like that was like after Taken came out, he started doing a bunch of action movies. Unknown. Um, so I don't know if he's coming out with an action movie, probably. But yeah, February and January is Neeson season. Neeson so, season. Neeson season. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about the Book of Boba Fett trailer. Um, yes. The trailer was okay. Uh, I wasn't, like, intrigued. It just seems kind of like... Because um, the Mandalorian was originally, I think, going to be a Boba Fett... Well, it was originally they were going to do a Boba Fett movie. But I think the guy who directed Fantastic Four had his meltdown, so Disney was just like, we don't want anything to do with him. So they decided to do Mandalorian instead. Um, so now they're doing a Boba Fett, and hopefully we'll show how he survived the Sarlacc pit. Yeah, that'd be good to see, right? They probably won't ever. They'll probably keep that, like, for the fans and for their imagination. I just hope it's not a passing reference. I just hope they just, just like a quick yeah, just scene a little of him reference. just, like, his rocket, his rocket works, and he's able to, like, rocket himself out of the Sarlacc pit after Luke and Han Leia left. So, um... I don't know. So I bet they will. We'll get so hopefully we'll get some answers to that because like you know, that just it's really like I think the Snoke thing made everyone so upset. I mean they explained it in the third movie, but like after Last Jedi came out, it was just like so this character we're just not going to know where he came from. Yeah, and cloning, cloning's not a good answer. He so was just like a really really weird like clone of Palpatine. Yeah, with a different voice. Um. So. So Boba Fett trailer. Finnick Shan's going to be in it. Um, yep. I guess he's like, going to take over Jabba's crew. That's I'm what guessing. it looked like. Yeah. I, yeah, I watched the I should watch for what, the podcast, but um, they're, they're sitting at a table and they're like, "Why should we listen to you?" And then he does something quippy. Forrest, are you them. watching it right now? No, I watched it like a week ago. Oh, it's a shame that we don't like do last... editing with this podcast, or we can pause it and then we all watch it and then talk about. I, the I like to go in. You know, if it, <laughs> if it stood out to me, if anything stood out in the trailer, I would have remembered it. So it was just basically just like Boba Fett is in it, as is Finnick Shand. Yeah, um, there's some sand. They're going to be on Tatooine. Yeah, at some point, um, I think. Um, are there any more Mandalorians in this, or is it just? Um, I, I didn't mean, even see. 
it's 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 Disney and a connected universe, so we'll probably get some cameos. I bet you there'll be a, a Jedi or two that he'll come across. Well, it's like the guy's like mouthing off the table, like, "Why should we listen to you?" And I thought Bubba was gonna shoot him. But he was just like, "No, you're cool, dude." <laughs> That's a fair opinion to have. Or what does he say? He's like, um, oh, um. It's like, oh, uh, good point. It's like the climax of the trailer. I actually I have it right know, up here. I don't know. I'm Flip doing it. We really should have watched it, but yeah. So, yeah, it's coming out next month. So, um, oh, speak freely. That's what speak free. Yeah, it's like, you know, he, no consequences. Like, yeah, speak freely. So, um, yeah, I'll watch it. It's only how many episodes? Like five? So, I mean, hopefully we'll have a big budget per episode. I mean, the, the, obviously it looks great since it's Disney and it's, um, they're putting a lot of money into it. Five but. sounds like an excellent, fast paced number. Of episodes yeah. is it coming out series. weekly or is it like all at once I'm good for uh, I'd imagine weekly, it's right? weekly okay yeah. and it's coming no, out it's going to cross over, over with Hawkeye isn't it so like one week we're going to talk about Hawkeye and then the next week we're going to talk about on oh, the same week we're going to talk about Boba Fett and Hawkeye so yeah I think so because uh, Hawkeye is coming out real soon here in November oh it's, it's November it's right around the corner huh it's like a it's like heavily like they've been releasing a lot of promos for Hawkeye they're definitely like playing like Chris music during the uh the trailers for it. even though it's coming out in thanksgiving so yeah we got we got a little while um but uh yeah boba fett i'll watch it <laughs> i think i still have disney plus i think i got rid of hbo max my subscription expired as did hulu but then all dexter premiered so i gotta watch dexter now first episode came out today yeah i really uh i really like hulu um I got finished Why the Last Man. I got finished What We Do in the Shadows. Have you and seen probably... the uh, Have you seen Inside Job on uh, Netflix, the animated comedy show? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was that's gonna say I think Robbie would really like it. Yeah, yeah those just... words. Yeah, that's what I was uh, texting y'all about. Oh, was it's it? Like... Yeah, about Inside Job. Oh, it was probably before I watched it. The, I, they're I basically just... the the Men in Black of conspiracy the theories. Illuminati. Yeah, it's really <laughs> funny. Yeah. Oh, it was anime. Yeah, I think I, I think I saw a promo for that. Um, I'm gonna check it out. We just we're just sort of like in a weird space. Like after what if ended, we just haven't really had anything to watch except like movies, and it's, we can't go watch them on HBO Max except Dune. So we would have talked about Eternals today, uh, me and Rob. But I don't know are any of y'all dying to see that? Yeah, I am. Uh, it was pretty okay. good. That we won't say anything. Uh, it was. I give it like a seventy. So I think like that they were. I think the critics were way too harsh on it. Yeah. Yeah, they they have a forty seven now, but the users the user ratings are eighty five. Well, they they were high for Black Widow too. I thought they were overly high for Black Widow, but um. Well, I thought Rob's uh, dad's review of Black Widow was insanely positive, saying it was the best uh, MCU movie to date. I was like, get out of here, get out of here, Rob's yeah. dad. Um, oh, um, guys, check out this episode. <laughs> uh, check out this, our latest podcast where uh, we review our favorite TV shows and movies, except we don't watch them anymore. Yeah. And um, you can earn us two cents. That's true. For a listen. Actually, it's like one cent, actually. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I thought 15 bucks per listen. I was like, damn. Yeah. That, I'm going to start creating fake accounts too much. immediately. We need one well, like a thousand <laughs> to get 15 bucks. So it's like, really... well, the thing is, we just need to like move to YouTube and like maybe be more visual. Instead of just like just doing purely audio. Um, of course, people... we need to get into the cl- the clickbait scam. Well, it's like YouTube. They um, they're not about views anymore. They're about like uh, the link people you know, the link people watch episodes. That's why like uh, Watch Mojo is like top twenty now instead of top ten because they want to keep people watching for a long time. That's how they monetize uh, content now. It's not just like you get like a like a million views. That's like doesn't mean anything anymore. You gotta have right, to watch. For, it's like the duration of the view. Yeah, the, the and that's why you see more. Out. That's why you see more like ten minute episodes because they want to hit that ten minute mark. Yeah, so right. they can people put are, a, like another ad in the middle or something. People are like posting like forty minute ep- like forty minute videos on like um, movie reviews. I'm like, no way. Like anything like more than five, you're losing me. Sorry, unless I'm like, really invested. Yeah, just give me a. A rundown well, it depends. Real if you're quick. doing like a breakdown or like a review, I think like a five minute review is perfect, but like a 40 minute breakdown doesn't seem like Yeah, breakdowns should be on. like like anything like 10. new rock stars. But that's just like the algorithm now. So it's just like YouTube's like that's how they want it now. They want people, they don't want people like just clicking on it. They want people like actually investing watching their it. time yeah. watching. Yeah. So. But you know what? Good. Because I want my content to be longer. 
I don't. I and more wanna, quality. Like, I want to watch something quick about something or something funny and move on with my day. So, uh, um, of maybe we should. Gold, oh, gold, man, we'll call you. Start, start calling you Goldfish well, Forest. This is coming, what, this that's is what TikTok from... is. TikTok's like you know, basically just like what five second videos, which what Vine was. I miss uh, Vine. TikToks to me longer though. Vines were like a set seven seconds, and it yeah, was amazing. it's amazing how creative people can be. Yeah, like I was truly just blown away at the creativity of some people. Some of them are really funny. Um, so, all right, so yeah, talk about Boba Fett. Yeah, they were awesome. Any predictions for the show? I guess it's going to take place. Hawkeye. No, I no, think for it's Boba, Boba oh for Fett. Boba Fett. If Hawkeye if Hawkeye's a Boba Fett, I will lose my mind. Um, MC crossover cross. confirmed. Yeah, the multiverse is <laughs> truly the multiverse. It's not just the mul- it's not just the Marvel multiverse. It's the multiverse, it's the Disney multiverse. That's why uh, it's I, a, pred- it's I predict I predict for, for uh, Boba madness. Fett. I want to make a prediction. Yeah, go ahead. First, there will be a moral conundrum in which Boba <laughs> Fett must decide. Between good and evil, a baby alien creature will come into his life uh, and make him change his ways. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do Lone Wolf and Cub anymore in here's, space. Here's I think they're going to do that Mandalorian. Are you, ready for, <laughs> are you ready for my bold prediction here? Because it's Star Wars, right? And, and like the Almighty Lucas says, uh, it's poetry, it rhymes. I think they're going to end the Boba Fett series with him falling in a Sarlacc pit. That'd be hilarious. Right, but uh, no, he goes to Iraq. You, you would piss off dude. so many people. Yeah, you already see him in, uh, yeah, Mandalorian. Has like the same face and everything, right? And he gets eaten like, by that. He's that, a clone. The hand puppet on that meteor in Empire Strikes Back. Remember that one? The hand puppet that comes out and tries to eat the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, I remember that. He gets eaten by that. So <laughs> uh, that's when the, bring it back to kill him off again. Yeah, that's when the classic um, Family Guy did it better. Oh yeah, moments <laughs> when he's like, shooting that. Dude, this he's Star like, Wars oh, Family Guy wrong. is so funny. Yeah. I what really about the prequels, that. Dad? I think the Cleveland Show are doing those. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. How Star do Wars? How would they do the prequels? No, I think he was just joking. But. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think that was yeah. the line from like the I don't know how they would do that. It's just like we'd have to like recast everyone <laughs> with different characters. Yeah, I, I just the prequels would be fine. Of course, I I want to do the prequels, but I'd be more interested in seeing them do like the the sequel trilogy. Yeah. Just Seth MacFarlane ripping it apart. Meg is Ray. Um, no one would watch that. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they do four. more Stephen King episodes. They did they did a Stephen King episode where they made I three am of loving the story. The new layout for Family Guy. I'm very impressed with this season so far. Oh, I, is it new one premiered? Yeah, new one's out. It's on Hulu. Oh, wow, and watch it. I gotta tell you, man, the the format they've changed it up and it's better. Last season didn't suck either, so I need to yep. check and it yeah, out. They they took what was good from the last season and they just did that over and over again. But like maybe my I was watching it and I was like, you know, if if Family Guy just wants to spend the next 20 years ripping off Seth MacFarlane's favorite movies. I'd watch every damn episode. Yeah. As long as they don't have more of the um, uh, Hudson Brothers cutaways. That was like literally like a five minute cutaway. No, dear and Lord. Just, that was yeah, so bad. Yeah. <laughs> that was so bad. Yeah. So, okay. So maybe we just review Family Guy to Hawkeye. So, or everyone can catch up in Young Justice. I don't know. I'm having, I'm having trouble getting through the first couple episodes because like they're on Mars. Superboy and McGann are getting married, and I just... Oh, I just spoilers. Care. They got oh. back together? Oh, oh, I was yeah, so sorry. upset in season two. They were always they, were. They, oh, they broke up in season... Well, they broke up between season one and season two. They are not together. Uh, Megan's with um, LaGrangia. La, La, La are you boy. on season two right now? Yeah, I'm on season two. The Reach. It is really good. It is surprising. If you like, if you like Blue Beetle, then you're going to love it. Um, well, see, I actually wasn't a fan of Blue Beetle. Um... But I realize it's just because that's not who like I grew up with. I don't because I'm not familiar with them. That's why he's kind of uh, like a weird. His character is pretty cool. Uh, now that I'm like getting to, like introduce like his character and who he is, yeah. uh, I'm starting to like like him a lot more. Well, they're doing like a movie about him. I think on HBO Max. So. Is that Buster Gold and? No, no, that's the and... other Blue Beetle. That's the, the Blue Beetle who was before him. Is just like a regular dude. But like oh, the Blue okay. Beetle on Young Justice is like a high. It's like sort of like a mix between Iron Man and Venom. He has like yeah. like a, a, he's got a that parasite on him. Back. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, we can review Young Justice too if y'all ever catch up. So, 
Or fuck um, it. Maybe we all just watch whatever we want to, and then we'll just come in and tell each other about how great it is, and the other people can just silently nod their heads and interact. That sounds like a real fun podcast. <laughs> yeah. No structure whatsoever. No structure. What did you watch, Rob? Watch, you, you, you see anything good this week, Rob? Oh, uh, yeah. I've been really into Westworld. I actually just recently finished the first season. Oh, that's oh, right. Well. <laughs> well, yeah cherish those moments yeah i've heard Didn't yeah i've heard from multiple people that the first season was way better in like the second or third season well, the, the twist, third season season's not bad. different is there even is there any season i haven't started season, season two yet is there a what uh, well i haven't seen it but you've seen season three though right mage yeah is there even any scenes in Westworld in it? In the actual Westworld, or just all in regular world? I think it's all in the real world. There, there <laughs> wow. might be like a no. There is a couple of flashbacks, oh, okay, or maybe that's the end of season but... two. But yeah, no, they're not. They don't go back to Westworld. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, who doesn't maybe, enjoy yeah. a flashback or two? Lost. Oh. Um, okay. So... Oh man, the whole thing with like uh, William and you find out you're basically watching multiple timelines next to each other. Yeah, yeah, the the twists in season one are way better than the one in season two. Um, The best part is... Season two has some good episodes. You know, it's not not awful. Oh, man, finding out you were a robot the whole time. Yeah, yeah, Bernard. You had no idea. That was probably the biggest (laughs) twist, along with... uh, Yeah, I I did not see that coming. That was cool. I knew that one of the... I knew one of the human characters was going to be a robot. I didn't know who, but I figured they were going to be... Because that's like the whole fun of the show. You don't know who's a host. And who's a yeah. human. And I knew one of the humans was going to be a robot. I didn't know who. And you're programmed but... so well, you have no idea yourself that you're a robot. Yeah. <laughs> and then, they, then, like, man, then, like, season two, they're just like, is the man in black a robot? He's a human who thinks he's a robot who thinks he's a human. Oh, man. Just show him a picture of your plans and be like, oh, it doesn't look like anything to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Westworld by season two, at the end of season two, it's just basically just got, like, the trope of a robot realizes. It's a robot, or the ro- robot race gained sentience. It's sort of became sort of stale for me, but I know it was, I thought season two was okay. Um, and the robot gained sentience. That's basically the entire plot of season one and season two. So um, that's really all I have, y'all. Um, I guess next. We're good. Week, now I don't need to watch it. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if any of y'all can go see Eternals over the week, maybe. Because they're not going to release in Disney Plus for another uh, while. Um, but yeah, <laughs> sorry. This is just like a slow. We're going to be a slow. I guess I could do. Uh, I guess I could do since Black Widow is on Disney Plus. I could do a, my reaction to it. And see how it compares. Well, I haven't watched it yet. You got think... Yeah, you got. Yeah, we've all talked about it already, but I, I still haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, uh, maybe next week we talk about Eternals. We talk about Family Guy. We talk about uh, why well, someone finished Why the Last Man. So maybe we just need to finally just do like a, a whole series retrospective if everyone can finish that. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll suffer through for you. Yeah, I only got two episodes have, left. You, I haven't the finished. Listener. I haven't finished Why the Last Man yet. Yeah. <laughs> why should I finish this show? Because it's the only time because <laughs> we'll, they're not going to make any more. You know, I guess you can take your time. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm gonna watch Dexter after we can wrap this up. So, but yeah, oh, yeah that's our Dexter too. Yeah, yeah, it's all on Hulu. So, all right, well, that's our show. Pretty short one, but um, had to be done. So, <laughs> for- I'm, I'm <laughs> had I'm, to be done. <laughs> yeah, I'm Forrest. I'm Major, and I'm Robbie. And I'm Tip, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. <laughs>